Hello, good morning everybody and welcome to our one of our island webinars in our series. Um, it's me today, Jen, and um, Karina is just having um, some connectivity um, issues with her side this morning. So we're going to see um, how far we can get along and then hopefully she will join us um, when she can. Um, so I'm really pleased to say this morning that we are joined um, with Noelle O'Connor, founder of Tan Organics. And today we're going to be talking about building your brand and how we're just getting on during these turbulent times at the moment. Um, so how are you, Noel? Welcome. Um, I'm great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> adjusting to business as unusual, um, everybody working from home. Um, and it's great to, to be on here talking to beauty therapists. Um, I might have mentioned earlier on, that's, my, uh, that's what I do. So from the age of 18, um, I'm a beauty therapist, 32 years now, um, and I worked as a therapist, worked as a manager, worked in a spa, started my own salon, um, developed a chain of salons, um, lost all of that in the previous recession of 2008, um, had a distribution company, was a sales rep, kind of did everything in the beauty space. Only thing I didn't do was cruise liners. So, um, and I suppose it's a labor of love. I love beauty therapy. I love being a therapist. I love education. I love knowledge. Um, and I love kind of doing something that's a little bit different and giving something that's not the same as everything else um, to my customers, to my clients. Um, so that's really me. And then I suppose um, Tan Organic was born out of the 2008 recession. Um, and thankfully, uh, we're going very strong. And I'll talk a little bit about what keeps us here and um, doing well through um, a second, um, not so easy time. But um, mm -hmm. I think I, I kind of want to say as well, thank you to all of the frontline workers um, that are doing a great job so that we can stay safe at home. Um, yeah. And um, I think if we can try and do as we're told and then try and stay positive and and for me i've just been reading extra books and trying to learn more and everybody's time i've been doing some webinars and i said to Corinne this morning if somebody that's listening today just learns something from this then it's been worth their while so hopefully um i can share some of my experience and you can get some tips and uh tricks and have not wasted your time because we all want to learn stuff during this time and and not have go oh god that's an hour of my time i'm never going to get back so i hope i can today i'm sure you will um i've just had somebody comment through saying the sound is very jumpy um is anyone else experiencing any sound issues apologies this is our first time using our new webinar platform um, so if anyone else is hearing us slightly distortedly please do let us know but yes i can time out at the moment to to really refresh and learn and educate yourself um, yeah. i think that's one thing that's definitely going to keep us all going <coughs> yeah now is everybody okay now? Can they hear? I've just maybe moved my my microphone a little bit closer. Okay. Yeah. I think we'll carry on. Um, if there is anything at all, please do message, um, and we'll see what we can do. Um, and hopefully Karina will be able to join us when she can. But I do have her questions, um, so I can begin um, asking you a bit more about yourself and your business and what you're normally up to. Um, so you've identified a gap in the market when you set about creating Tan Organic. How did you do this? And how did you make sure there was a, a demand for what you wanted to make? So when I came out with Tan Organic um, in 2010, 2008 was the Great Recession. Um, I had a chain, I built my salons to, from a one room behind a hairdresser's to a chain of high-end medispas, um, you know, doing about three million in revenue. And I started that from a 2,000 pound credit union loan. Mm -hmm. So 
when when the recession hit, I had 40 staff. I had um, six salons. And um, it was just like, well, we know what it was like. And, and so I sat there, like most of you, thinking, what can I do? Um, and it was in 2010. I went on Dragon Ten. And um, but I had started the idea of tan organic before that, um, and what I thought was I always had to use fake tan because now I've deliberately not done my tan because I'm wearing off, and I'll explain about that later on. But um, and I wanted I use tan all of the time, and my skin was drying out um, more than it should because I'm I'm a fanatic um, ingredient conscious beauty therapist, so I wanted to bring out a tan that would be moisturising. And the more that you use it, the better your skin would be. So that was my, and that, I thought, if I could have something like that, and it made really logical sense to me to do that. So it's to kind of find an opportunity um, and a solution to a problem. So I went on Dragon's Den, um, which I have to say was great. What an experience. Yeah, I mean, it was a terrifying experience. And then I I went and did it last year on the UK again. I must be the only person bonkers enough to do anything twice. Um, But, you know, um, fear shouldn't hold you back. And there's opportunities. And I suppose there's a lot of you out there that can, you know, Instagram and Facebook is your your new dragon's den to your customers. So you can can put your ideas out there. Um, And we had phenomenal success. I suppose I created my own monster in Ireland where I, I, I was the first one to do a tan and a new tan came out every year, but nobody really did the organic. And uh, what was different, and to this day, we're doing really, we're not doing really well, but we're doing better than I thought because we have an 88% repeat purchase. We did a quick, you know, 100,000 uh, analytics across 100,000 worth of sales and got our exact, exact demographic, but 88% of our customers are repeat buying our product and 10 years later we're they're still coming to us to buy that online and i wish it was because it was organic but it's because the ingredients are so good and and i love the fact that i'm talking to beauty therapists because each and every one of you um understand ingredients and because the ingredients are so good the skin condition improves the more you use tan organic but people aren't buying it, weren't buying it. They are now a bit, I suppose, because times have changed. They weren't buying it because it was organic. They were buying it because the fade off is so good and the skin was getting more moisturized or more, more moisturized rather than drier. And that's because in order to get organic certification, you have to use a certain quality ingredient. And there's a number of ingredients that are banned. And so, it's much more difficult for us to have new product development because when I have an idea and my formulator says, no, you can't use that, you can't use that, you can't use that. And sometimes I go, oh God, maybe I shouldn't be organic because it it, it stops some of my creative. But I, I go, no, I want to have the cleanest possible ingredients. So there's a difference between clean beauty, which is great and I love that as well, than organic and certified organic. And so in order to be a product, not ingredients, a product to be certified organic, um, it has to pass an audit. But unfortunately, you can go into your uh, retail store and you can pick up beauty products or your beauty store and it can say organic. There's no legal definition to organic, natural and mineral. So you can have as little as one ingredient and that can be in the bottom of your inky list and it can be as low as 1,000 of a percent, and law says that you can put organic, natural, or mineral on your packaging. Um, So in actual fact, um, when something says certified organic ingredients, that's probably not a certified organic product, so it needs to be certified, and and we use EcoCert, which come and do an audit in my manufacturer, they do an audit in our office, and they literally want to know which side of the mountain the herbs were grown on um, so that kind of explains the difference between certified organic ingredients and organic and, and asking you know what percentage of ingredients are so that was what made it different and and so there was a, a solution to a problem that i wanted roll on to 10 years later and um, 
it, it has been really challenging. Um, we had a fantastic start to our year. Um, and um, thankfully, those 88% of customers don't want to buy any other product. Um, so they're still buying our product and we're surviving because we've got a loyal customer base. So I'm very, I'm, gr I'm, gra I'm glad I stuck to, to what, I, what I wanted to do. And the other thing is, um, I was passionate about what I did. So I enjoyed it. So during the really tough times, um, there's nothing worse than, if you don't want to go to work today, you're in the wrong job, you know? So even when it was really crap days, um, I still loved what I was doing. So I suppose it's trying to find um, an opportunity in in what you can do to, to promote your business and your Instagram and your facial as that Facebook as that dragon's den, um, which you know is not as scary, but um, you know use that opportunity. There's there's so many well educated beauty therapists and and people are at home and they want to hear about you know how to do. Yeah, definitely. And I think having platforms with social media and Facebook, it's given people the tools to be able to put their things out there a little bit more and get feedback as well, which, as you said, using it like Dragon's Den and putting that into practice that way, I think is just one way for smaller businesses, startups, anyone who wants to enter the industry to be able to do that and give that have that platform. Yeah, and use this time to ask your customers um, what you can do better um, when you open up again. So this is a time where they have time, you have time, and you know them. So you can call and just say, look, I when we open up again, um, what could I do better um, to, to help you, you know, feel more comfortable? Is there anything that we can do much better? Is there anything I should stop? And some, we do that quite a lot. We ring online customers and you find out why did somebody repeat purchase? Why did somebody not come back? And some of the information you find out gives you like, oh my God, I never seen that. Because when you're on the inside, you yeah. don't see what the customers, we always think, it's the same thing. We sell what we like. Yeah. But good to use this time to see what your customers want. And you can work around that then afterwards. Yeah, definitely. I think... It's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. And then um, online. Um, online has been great for us. Um, I think if you look at the stats, online has changed. I think it's going to continue that way. So if you haven't got your site now, um, and I was just talking, you know, my manager from my old world has been my first salon and, and I was talking to her and I said use this time to get your website up and done and um, because people are going to get used to buying online and that's not going to go back it's going to continue um, and even if you don't have a website um, like for us um, where people can be um, affiliates so you can contact us and we give a 20% uh, commission and using your so if you, even if you don't have stock and you don't have a website, you can talk about products and say, you know, if you go to channelgarding.com with this affiliate link, then you can be earning it can be earning revenue for not having the stock, not having your website. And you can go to other suppliers as well and see will they they, they do that. And um, yeah. I know we're actually paying cash because nobody wants credits. In fairness, what good is it to them? They all have their own stock and they need to sell it when they get back. So for us, we're actually the affiliates where at the end of the month, we're just sending cash out to them. So that's a way of earning cash. If you haven't got your website and you haven't got the stock and you haven't got the money to buy the stock, you know, let your suppliers do all of the work and just take the commission. And it's just a way of earning extra cash. But I would say to everybody, if you can at all, um, try and get your website developed. I know in Ireland, if anybody's listening to Ireland, if you go to your local enterprise board, they have a grant, a two and a half thousand pound euro grant, and um, they'll give that to you to build your website. So go and look on your local enterprise board, and I'm sure maybe in the UK they have similar grants where they will support you to build your website. So go and look for those grants and find them. Yeah. Um, so with back to our questions then from Karina. I think I'm not sure. Karina, can you hear us? Are you, are you in the um, yeah. room? 
I'm here, but I can I turned. Can you uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I t I had to turn the video off because um it kept freezing. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So do you want me? Do you want me to take over there, Jen? Yeah, yeah, I can stay as well. Um, I can I can stay as well and jump in if anything, if we do need any more help at all. Um, but I was going to yeah. say into the next question of um so source and the ingredients and um any experience with inventing your organic ingredients and where did that stem from so i suppose if we go back to what i i said earlier on and um, i i sourced my ingredients and i wanted to find and initially and um, we didn't have any preservative in it we were just using time and a uh, grapefruit extract which is not strong enough you know and we don't we didn't want to use um preservatives but preservatives are important you have to have preservative preservatives in so that there's no um, microbes that get into your product and um, but you've got to find um a green uh preservative so what we use is a geoguard ultra which is a combination of two natural ingredients which is allowed by EcoCert, but it's not a paraben, it's not phenoxyethanol. So all of those are banned by EcoCert. So we have to find the greenest, greenest preservative that we can, and that's allowed. So we we have a very kind preservative in our product. So that that take took some time. And I was using phenoxyethanol originally. It was it wasn't I wasn't overly happy with it. That was back in two thousand and twelve, and EcoCert banned it. Um, so we took that out, but thankfully we have GeoGuard Ultra, which is a great green preservative, and we use that. And um, sourcing our ingredients, I love that. It's like going shopping for a gourmet meal, you know, and it's organic. And I go, I usually start off and I say, look, I want to have this, this. And so I pick all of my oils, and all of our products are um, either very, very strong organic aloe vera juice, based or oil based so if we look at our mousse and um, we've no sulfates in it which doesn't dry out the skin and um, which sulfates the sodium laurel sulfate is what you need to foam in your cleansers and your shampoo and it really dries out the skin and most mousses have them we don't have it and um, we've got hyaluronic acid but we've got 75 percent organic aloe vera juice in our lotion we've got 84 percent organic aloe vera juice so going back to my original idea when you put our tan on, it's like squeezing organic aloe vera joy, juice, hyaluronic acid, um, marula oil, babab oil, plant oils onto your skin. So all of the, the product, it's short, inky list, but it's all good stuff in higher volumes. So that's what hydrates the skin, and that's why it wears off so well. So I'm due to have do my tan again. I'm not completely white, and this is seven days in. If I was 10 days in, I would be this color. Um, but I can put my tan on tonight. I don't have any wear off. I have a little bit of color. Um, and that's what that's because the ingredients are so moisturizing. So sourcing our ingredients, we have to be certified organic. Um, and it's not just organic. We have some ingredients that we're not allowed to use because the way they're extracted. So it's really it's challenging and um, but and i said that earlier on but what's great about it is the quality of them is so good that i have um a really good product and for my commercial team my cost of good to make it is so much higher so our margins aren't as big as other tans because i can make it for half or a third of that price but it would the ingredients just would not be good quality and dry out my skin so I get a satisfaction of, I suppose it's like therapists. It's like when they're doing a facial and they're using really good quality ingredients. That customer's getting up and know the difference. There's a, such an obvious difference between good quality ingredients. And again, you know, all of our oils are plant oils. They're not mineral oils. They're not vegetable oil. They don't sit on the skin. They are absorbed into the skin. So the whole range is either plant oil based or aloe vera and hyaluronic base so it's like a skincare but it's your it's your fake tan so for me you can see how excited i get about that because 
I'm really passionate about the good stuff that's in our products, yeah. And I, and going back to to that, in, now that if you're at home and it's the time that your clients are at home and you get to you get to tell them about this stuff, you get to tell them about the stuff that's in your your facials and your ingredients, and you get they they have time to listen now. And and I was saying to Karina earlier on, everything in beauty is about a concept or an education. If I could go around the world educating one by one the difference between our self-tan and other self-tans, um, I would get so many customers, but it would take me till I'm 199. Um, and, you know, social media gives you an opportunity to share your knowledge. And um, really, uh, beauty is all about concepts. And if you can explain to the customer, like I've just explained to you, um, this is why this product wears off so well. They just will go, okay, that makes perfect sense now that you say it that way. And this is why this treatment works so well. And this is why um, ingredients do this. That's what you're there for. I mean, that's why, you know, I love being a therapist because I get to explain that. And people want to hear it. So, so do that while you're at home. And have all those people that were not your customers coming to you when you open back up again. Definitely. Um, with um, the organic and the ingredients that you mentioned there, has this always been a must for you from the get-go, from when you started? Yeah. I Even when I had my salon, you know, my wax had to be the best quality, my eyelash tint. Everything I paid more for um, because, you know, you get what you pay for, really. And um, you can't produce quality. You can't produce a gourmet meal with processed foods and tins. You know, you, you, it's all, yeah, I, I've always been like that. I'm a bit of a cosmetic snob. Ingredient snob probably is a word for me. Um, and I think anybody that's passionate about beauty therapy will, will be the same. And it, it, there's, you know, if I look back, um, I had a great business. I was flying the, you know, the Celtic flyer. That I was able to buy premium products. But I've always been, you know, you get the best results from the best ingredients. And the, there's no way of changing that. You know, you can't, yeah, really, yeah just, Definitely. And then leading on to how important then was it for you um, to be eco-certified and now to your brand and the building of it and that, that focus that you have on the environment? Yeah, so now people are becoming more educated, but it used to drive me up the wall. You wouldn't, wouldn't hear, people would put organic on their products. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and I think, sorry, sorry, yeah. coming in there again. Oh, I think Karina... Uh, so don't worry, Karina. We'll 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 carry on. Oh, sorry. Okay. Is she putting you out of a job, Karina? <laughs> oh, no, we just couldn't get her. <laughs> She's enjoying her new life as a journalist. <laughs> oh, I think I think there's a delay on us. Okay. No problem. Um, we'll carry on, and if you can jump in, um, we'll try and get you back before the end. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. That quite, just, I was just going to jump in with a sort of a side question there when you were talking about organic, um, and being. You know, do you find now that, I mean, you started out 10 years ago, but I was reading the other day that um, Generation, I think they're Generation Z or Z, um, yeah. are, are the up and coming sort of, um, you know, people that are using skin products more. There's this whole new movement where that age group is starting. They're looking at, people are looking after their skin from an earlier age. And that particular age group is really eco-conscious. And yeah. do you think that like having such an eco stamp on your own brand will help you sort of move into new markets? Is it a, is it a real USP these days to be yeah, eco friendly? It has, it has been for the last 18 months, Karina. Thankfully, you know, it wasn't easy me going around one by one 
trying to educate the world. Um, you know, when I started out, I suppose uh, Facebook and Instagram wasn't as, as strong as it is now. Um, and definitely, um, we have, we're vegan certified and we actually, um, <laughs> when I spoke to um, the vegan, um, it, um, Annabelle from the Vegan Society, she was like wild that people are putting 97% vegan, vegan friendly, all of this, and they don't have certification because it's quite strict. I, I, you know, you you have to verify from your suppliers that they're it's completely non bovine extract. It's completely, it's 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 not as tough as EcoCert, but it's tough. And she, I said, look, how do we? I said, I've just driven behind a, a well known brand, and we know they're not vegan certified, and they've got it all over. And she said, oh no, well, that drives me mad. And she she came back and she actually made a video from the Vegan Society about tan organic. <laughs> Um, but you'll find my son works for an influencer agency and he does a lot of work um, in the US and the UK and um, doing really well. And he, he says, he says to me, Mom, um, these influencers are very educated and they want to see the certification. So I'm delighted that, you know, and they, they, they're not, they won't talk about a vegan product unless it is really certified. So just be careful of your you know, organic ingredients or organic on a box or, you know, the best one I heard was ni 97. I was speaking to a girl and she was really <laughs> lovely. I didn't she said, my brand is 97% vegan. And I said, oh, that's lovely. You know, it's really nice. There's only a little bit of beeswax in it. And I didn't say anything because she was so nice, you know, but I thought that was quite interesting. Um, uh, so yeah, you're either vegan or you're not, and, and you're vegan certified. So the certifications, um, we're also um, top rated tan um, and, and most ethical self tan. They self, they just did. Um, we're, it's going to be released very shortly. The Ethical Society just did some research, and there's 15 tans, and we come out number one as the most ethical and um, cleanest self tan brand in the world. And um, so we're really happy about that. Um, we have a hundred score and there's only seven cosmetic companies in the world who have that. So we're trying to be as sustainable as possible, cut out all of our air shipping, sea shipping, um, cut down on, on uh, plastic. A lot of our, our, clean, our wrapping is all sugar polymer. We're all glass wood. Our new bottles are sugar polymer. I'm a bit of a freak when it comes to that. They, you know, when I'm in, in, in meetings and management meetings, I'm dealing with commercial people and everything that I want costs more and it's more awkward, it's more difficult, um, but I kind of don't really budge on it because I think we have to look after our planet. Look look in this awful disaster that we're, we're starting to see nature more. We're starting to see our planet, you know, less... Um, pollution in it and I think people are going to come out of this with a bigger self sense of well-being and minding our world because we're all in this together it's one world and um, it's not just about we're here and they're there everybody is in exactly you know no matter where you are we're in the same place and I think I would hope that we come out and and, and look after our one world much better and take care of it and I think people will think more about health and wellness and they'll think more about the health and wellness of our world which is one world yeah thank you and i i wanted to ask you and apologies if i'm repeating anything from earlier on because i couldn't hear you at the beginning um you know i suppose like if you're marking 10 years this year um since you you founded the company so it's been 10 years of tan organic and you know you you started from you know, from the very basics of, you know, inventing a product by yourself. And, you know, what would you say to anybody about that journey? Um, you know, it has to have been full of highs and lows. And if anybody is, if anybody has, has identified a gap in the market somewhere and they're quite passionate about, you know, doing something like what you've done, what would you say about that, that journey? I would say, looking back, um, I didn't realize it was going to be so difficult and it was challenging. Um, I would say I probably should have had more expertise around me so I didn't learn by mistakes so much. 
because learning by mistake is great. You make that mistake and you never make it again. I have so much knowledge because I've made so many mistakes. So get some support from people who know. Like, if feel free to email me and ask me a question. Ask people, other other small brand owners or big brand owners that you can get. So this is a time where you'll actually get to speak to people you wouldn't normally get to speak to. So you know, for me, I'm going to get to speak to buyers and decision makers during this time that I wouldn't normally get to speak to because they'd be too busy. So use this opportunity to ask the questions that you need to do. And um, there is opportunity. Maybe you need to look at a different way of doing your business. Maybe it needs to be more face-to-face -face consultations. Um, for example, you could be like this. And uh, Karina, you're my customer. We can't. Um, but I can show you how to do facials or something like that. And you can buy the products and do it at home. Um, so maybe start developing that um, where you can zoom, zoom your customers and ask them would they be interested in that. Just write down something, a blank piece of paper and, and write down the ideas of what you can do. You can only do what you can do. And, and everybody's in the same boat. You're not in this by yourself. Everybody is the same. So just ask, you know, people you know, and um, ask for help, and um, yeah, be passionate. And and I said earlier on, I I um, <coughs> I wasn't well there for a little while, and my my gratitude book. You can see how worn it is. And um, over the yeah. years, during tough times, and um, I find that when I'm stuck or I I'm not having such a great day saying thank you for three things or being grateful for three things in your life can't but put you in a positive frame of mind and it actually doing gratitude for 21 days will actually your brain will actually be trained to look at things from a positive because it's very hard to see opportunities in a negative in a negative space so try mm -hmm. and put in a positive space and um being grateful even if, when you wake up every morning and be thankful for your cup of coffee be thankful that it's sunny outside. Be thankful for your health, your children. Your brain can't help but change. And it's scientifically proven, 21 days of that, and you'll have a more positive outlook. So stay positive, stay passionate, and just ask for help. Yeah, that's so true, actually. I was just saying that to somebody last night um, about the situation that we're in at the moment. You know, I mean, there's probably nobody that isn't struggling with it. But if you continually look at the negative, it's going to get us nowhere. So you have to actually every day look at what you do have and not what you don't have or, you know, not what you're missing. It's just like, and we'll all get through it that way. And it's the same for business, I think. Yeah. And, and, and it's not a case of, oh, whoop, whoop, I'm going to be positive every day, you know, because that yeah. there isn't to be positive about, but you can be optimistic. So there's a difference yeah. between positive and optimistic. You know, I use the word positive, but I think, um, I think, I'm so sorry, I didn't put that on silence. I think, um, I think positives, you know, I'm lucky I'm here. I have, I have my husband with me. I have my son with me. Um, I'm a lot luckier than other people. There are people that are maybe in small apartments by themselves. So it's hard to be positive. Um, so just try, you know, be grateful and optimistic and maybe, um, you know, something will, will, you know, this will end, this will pass, everything passes, you know, um, but yeah, try and stay optimistic. If you can't stay positive, stay optimistic. Okay, thank you so much, Noelle, for your time and apologies for all the technical issues um, and apologies to everybody that, you know, you can't see me, you can only hear me and uh, and I wasn't there at the beginning, I'm so sorry, um, my, my computer just crashed with the new platform i don't know what happened so uh but you know we plowed on we did yeah. i just got one question that's come in um and yeah. it's, um, it's regarding corona times um and it's where can i find info regarding the hygiene plan in corona times ahead um what new regulations do you have in ireland so this might be from one of our overseas visitors. Um, what kind of regulations are being put in place for hygiene over there? 
Well, there there are um, regulations in Ireland, and um, I just read the other day um, where when when we do open up, everybody's going to have to have um, a kind of a coronavirus safety officer, if you like. Okay. How small your business is, somebody's going to have to take the responsibility of making sure um, that the um, social distancing is happening in work, and um, all of the things that we're supposed to do. Um, it just came in um, probably about a week ago, so it, we're still early days, but it was good to see that that's been passed, so we're preparing for when we do open up again, so if you've got one therapist, if it's just yourself, you're going to be the person responsible for that. If you've got five staff, you either, or you nominate um, an employee that's important, that's the champion of, of hygiene and safety, so that's what seems to be happening here. I don't know if it's happened in the UK. That's a nice idea. I like the thought of a champion within the workplace and in the organisation. Yeah, yeah. Making on that. Sure, yeah, making sure everybody is behaving and, and doing mm -hmm. what they're supposed to be doing. So that's what we've that's that's the first bit I've read about that. Yeah. I don't know who's going to be our champion yet. We're all working remotely. And um, it it is good to know that there's going to be a little police safety hygiene safety hygiene police officer in every company, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. And the thought of just being optimistic and positive um, until yeah. we get to that stage, I think it's all going to keep everybody going. Um, and if there was any more questions that you did want to ask, this video will be put on our YouTube and on our Facebook um, as a post afterwards. So please do comment and I will pass on all of your messages to both Noelle and Karina. Okay, and stay safe. Cool. And well. Thank you, Noelle. And thanks Thank everyone you. for tuning in. Thank you. Okay. We'll be back next week um, with our next webinar um, and we'll email you all of the details beforehand. So I hope to see you then. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.